This is this is awkward. <laughs> Change your shirt. <laughs> right. What happens if a bank valuation comes in lower than the purchase price? We've seen it a lot lately. And today in this video, we'll look at how to increase a low bank valuation so you can purchase the property of your dreams. Including one methodology that you can use to knock down the price of your purchase. So Jaden, let's dive right in. So Jaden, what happens if the bank values your property less than the purchase price? Yeah, Josh, this is something that is surprisingly common with brand new purchases that are off the plan and that have happened recently. In fact, we saw in one recent case with some first home buyers that purchased a unit in Wool and Gabba. While their purchase price was 527,000, we had bank valuations as low as 485,000. That's a reduction of over $40,000 from purchase price to the valuation. So why is this an issue? When you buy a property these days, the bank will get an independent third party, a property valuer, to look at the property. They'll walk through and make sure what you're paying on paper should be what it's gonna be worth, should the bank have to sell it worst case. And this is where the problems begin. The bank valuation is an opinion, and this is where lies the problem. It's based on previous sales, which can be up to 12 months old. What that means is a value could be comparing your brand new two bedroom apartment with the unit down the road that's over 30 years old. And in their opinion, if they're similar, they could use that old comparable sale to say, well, your property's actually not worth this because brand new, it's worth the same as the 30 year old unit. And that's where we've been seeing lots of problems lately. The most commonly affected properties we see with bank low valuations are brand new off the plan properties, generally units, or newly constructed properties. Generally, this is the case because they're brand new and they're comparing that property with, as Jaden said, older properties of inferior quality. It's a similar problem to buying a brand new car. It has a bit of a premium because no one's lived in it before and it's obviously, you know, subjectively a lot nicer than a unit that could be 30, 40, 50 years old or a house that's been lived in and could have problems with it compared to something brand new. So how to fix it? These are our three big tips that will help you get the bank to increase your valuation. Number one, challenge the valuation. Now I hate to say it, but this has a pretty low chance of going through. When you challenge a valuation, you need to provide the value of recent comparable sales. Like we said before, they had to, have, had to have happened in the last three to six months. They can't be in the same building and they need to be similar properties. So they need to be like a two bedroom unit or a four bedroom house in the same suburb, preferably in the same area. And even if you have emphatic evidence to show that they've undervalued the property, it's still up to the valuer to accept. And therefore, it's their opinion that reigns supreme. We've seen cases recently where we've even provided a valuer another valuer's report that might be $50,000 more. But because the original valuer thought it was worth less, their opinion is going to reign supreme and they're going to stick with that value. The reality is different banks use different valuers. Therefore, you should be able to get a different opinion and possibly a better value through a different valuation firm. So on this step, you'd organize another two valuations with another two banks. And at the end of that process, once you've got three valuations, if all three have undervalued the property, then it means we have to go to step three. So step three is renegotiate with the sellers. I had this recently, Josh, where someone had bought a one bedroom unit in Chermside in Brisbane, and they'd paid $350,000, which seemed like a good deal for a one bedroom. We went and got three separate valuations. One came in at 315, one came in at 320, and a second came in at 320,000. So that's over $30,000 less than it was under contract for. Now, fortunately, the property was still subject to finance. So the owner was able to go back to the selling agent and say, well, hey, this bank says it's worth 315, and these two say it's worth 320. I want you to reduce the purchase price to 320 so I can still buy it. So if you've still got a finance clause, that's an excellent opportunity. Sometimes the seller won't be open to negotiations. And at that point, you've really got two options. Option one is to walk away. Or option two is to be aware that you may have to put more in a deposit to purchase the property. All right, so a bonus tip on ways to manage this. Another thing we're seeing that's really common at the moment is a developer's rebate. So in the case of the example we just said then, the developer or the selling agent might come back and say, hey, we don't wanna reduce the contract price from 350 because then everyone else in the complex is gonna see it's worth less. So one thing that they do, Josh? So instead of reducing the price, they'll give you a rebate. So in the example, 
they'll offer a $30,000 rebate that's payable on settlement. How does this affect the contract? Well, in all cases, the contract will still stay at $350,000, so you'll have to pay stamp duty on the higher value. Then the developer at settlement will give you the money back. In the eyes of the bank, though, the purchase price is still three twenty. dollars So they're still going to expect you to come up with that extra deposit, potentially, and know where it's coming from. So just be wary of that, because it can trip up a lot of people out there, and if you don't tell the bank, some of them won't even settle at settlement. So that's it for today, guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up or leave a comment below. And I'd love to hear from you. Which tip did you like the best? To contest the valuation or to order another one? Leave your comments below. All right, guys. Next time. Bye.